when I started these pieces and I got so much grief and so much pushback for what I was doing that, you know, I was an advocate, I wasn't a journalist, that, that, that these virtual reality things were games. And um, I used to take that criticism extremely seriously, but it didn't stop me. My name is Nani De La Pena, and I'm a pioneer in how we can use virtual reality to tell non-fiction narratives. Virtual reality has had its sort of fits and spurts and starts. The first big boom of VR was in the 90s. And when it didn't really materialize in a way that could be commercialized and, and really go out to the public, uh, people really disparaged the kind of uh, investment that went into it. But that doesn't mean that people didn't stay working away at it. Now with Facebook buying Oculus Rift for $2 billion, I would say that the validation for virtual reality as a technology has come full circle. So in 2012, my piece Hunger in Los Angeles premiered at the Sundance Film Festival. How many of us know about how hungry people have gone in America and how overstrained the food banks are? We've read that over and over again. But then you put them on scene at a food bank line when they see this man collapse and chaos breaks out. And I use real audio from the real events. You really can hear how that event unfolded and what the experience was like for people who were there. In order to do the body capture and make sure that we um, could reproduce our witness exactly as she really was, we use a light stage. And the light stage means that we can capture somebody in a 360 degree way and make sure we get every natural nuance of their physical presence. So the virtual reality goggles actually have like a tracking system with these bright cherry red lights that the cameras can read and they know exactly where you're looking in space. And that is what's key to making you feel comfortable. Despite the fact that the graphics seem limited or that we don't actually yet have completely photoreal um, characters and environments, it's amazing how experiencing through your body allows you to suspend any questions and you actually feel like it's real. Klaus Schwab, who's the head of the World Economic Forum, came through my lab at USC and did hunger. He took off the goggles and turned to me and said, can you build me something on Syria? It is another very powerful story, again using material that was captured on scene. It's a two-part piece that puts you in a corner in Aleppo when a mortar shell hits, a young girl is singing, and um, you really can hear the pain and the chaos of the ensuing event. I was amazed at what happened with Project Syria at the World Economic Forum. There was an incredible reaction. Um, people were crying and moved and, and um, astonished. And, and, and then after that, action has occurred. I think this is a medium that can take away the filter of the journalists and let people become witnesses to their own stories. One of my latest projects, Use of Force, tells a story about a migrant without a green card who lived in the US since she was 15, who was beaten and tased to death by more than a dozen uh, Border Patrol officers. The piece uses real material that was captured on scene that night, including this incredibly powerful audio uh, as he cries for help um, while he's beaten and tased to death by the officers. It creates an empathy in people that I think uh, far surpasses any other medium uh, that we have today to tell those type of stories. I think that that's what, what's key here is that, that in fact we don't just see the world just through our eyes, we actually see the world through our entire body. It's been the most powerful medium I've ever worked in. I think this is absolutely the big bang moment for VR. I actually have chills. <laughs>